All right, in this video, I want to start looking at the notion of what's called a span of a set of vectors. So start off here with a little, uh, just some good old definitions, and then from that, we'll, we'll look at some more examples here. So the idea is we've got a set of vectors, v1, v2, up to, you know, v sub k. Um, a lot of times vectors, the notation, they'll be a little bold or have a little line over them. I've kind of uh, not done that here, but again, the v's will stand for vectors. So um, what we do is we look at the set of all linear combinations of this set of vectors, and that's what's known as the span. So kind of the way I think about it is, you know, our, we've got some set of vectors, and we're basically just multiplying those by uh, scalars and then adding them together. And so these are kind of like the, the building blocks that you're starting with, and it's, you're kind of thinking, how can I take these vectors and basically create new vectors? So again, just to reemphasize, uh, a linear combination, again, is just uh, c sub 1 times v sub 1 plus c sub 2 times v sub 2 up to c sub k times v sub k, where the c sub i's are uh, just real number scalars. So again, the c's are just scalars, the v's again are vectors. So just kind of at random, I've, I've picked a couple here. Um, nothing special about these at all, but just to hopefully give you a little bit of intuition. So suppose we just start with uh, two vectors here. Suppose we have the vector uh, 1, 3 and the vector 2, 5. So these would be vectors in R2. Um, if we think about the span of those vectors, we can write the span of those vectors as, well, c sub 1 times the vector 1, 3 plus c sub 2 times the vector 2, 5. So, again, I've kind of picked constants at random here, 1 and 4, and I'm going to use these constants and just create some, uh, you know, some new vectors. So, again, these are kind of my initial two vectors I'm starting with, and I'm, I can create new vectors. So, you know, a new vector that we could create out of this, uh, you know, out of this, uh, these two original, well, again, I'm going to let uh, c sub 1 equal 1, and we said we're going to let c sub 2 equal 4. And, well, recall if you multiply by a, a, a real number scalar, you just multiply the entries respectively. So if we multiply by 4, 4 times 2 is 8, well, 4 times 5 is 20. And then we can add the components together. So if we add 1 plus 8, that'll give us 9. Uh, 3 plus 20 would give us 23. So we've got a new vector, this vector uh, 9 with components 9, 23. This vector would be in the span of those original two vectors. So again, I've started with two vectors hey, I've multiplied by some numbers at random and created yet a new vector. So you can do this, obviously, you know, pick your two favorite numbers um, and go through this process. And you can go through that and, you know, create all the vectors that would be in the span of, again, these original two vectors that we started with. Okay, so a lot of times a very common thing that you'll want to do is uh, you'll want to take a vector you know, you'll, you'll have a vector. In this case, I'm taking the vector 20 with components 20 and 4, and I'm going to show it belongs to the span of those, again, those two vectors that I'm, I'm playing with in this example. So, so can I figure out a linear combination of these two vectors that will produce that new vector? That's the, the question that we're trying to address here. Okay, so again, this is a lot of times an important question. Can you start with certain vectors and create, you know, a new, a new vector, uh, some vector in particular? Well, you know, again, kind of the question, what we have to do is we have to figure out some constant c sub 1, so that when I multiply that by 1, 3, and then some other constant c2, so that when I multiply that by 2, 5, at the end of the day, I want to get this vector 20, uh, with components 20 and 4. Well, one way to do this is, again, you could multiply. So we would have 1c1, and then we would have 3c1, plus, well, 2c2, and then 5c2. We're going to want that to equal the vector with components 20 and 4. And again, what I'm going to do is uh, write this as a little system of equations. Um, so we've got c1 plus 2c2, and then 3c1 plus 5c2, if we add the respective components. 
And again, we want that to equal 20 and 4. So again, you can think about this as just being a little uh, you know, linear system of equations that we have to solve. So again, just writing down the corresponding equations. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a little bit of row reduction uh, to see what our constants C1 and C2 would have to equal in order to solve this. So again, if we take the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 5, um, We'll put the 20 and the 4 on the other side. So again, obviously, we could have uh, you know, just jumped to this step at the very beginning. Again, we're just taking um, you know, the components of each vector, so 1, 3, 2, 5. And again, we're trying to produce this vector with components 20 and 4. So I'm going to do a little row reduction here. So I think if we take negative 3 times row 1 and add that to our row 2, I'm going to use that to produce our new row 2. So let's see, the first row I'm going to leave alone, 1, 2, 20. So let's see, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Let's see, negative 3 times uh, positive 2 is going to give us negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is going to give us negative 1. And then let's see, I guess we would have uh, negative 60 plus 4. Well, let's see, negative 60 uh, plus 4, that's going to give us... I guess, uh, how about negative 56, if I can do my arithmetic here correctly. That looks okay to me. Well, what I'm going to do now, because again, we would like to have a 1 here, I'm just going to take negative 1 times row 2, and that's going to produce my new row 2. And I'm, I'm not going to write this step out, we can just change it, so that'll be a positive 1 and a positive 56. And now what I'm going to do from here is, I'm going to take negative 2 times our row 2, and then I'm going to add that to row 1 to produce our, uh, our new first row. Okay, so we've still got 0, 1, and 56 there at the bottom. Let's see, so if I do negative 2 times 0 plus 1, that's still 1. Uh, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Let's see, negative 2 times 56, that's going to be what? I guess uh, negative 1, 12. If we add that to positive 20, that's going to give us negative 92. So again, remember this represented the coefficients C1 and C2. So it looks like if we let C1 equal negative 92, and if we let C2 equal positive 56, those are going to be the values of our constants that produce uh, the, this uh, vector with components 20, 4 that we wanted. So let's even check here and make sure. So we've got, let's see, so C1 we said is negative 92 times 1 and 3, plus we said our C2 value should be positive 56. This is the problem when you pick numbers at random, I guess. They're not always uh, the smallest numbers, but that's okay. So let's see, well, we would have again, if we multiply, we'd have negative 92. Let's see, negative 92 times 3, that's going to be negative 276. If we take 56 times 2, that's going to give us 112. 56 times 5, let's see, so that's what, 280? So the question is, does that give us 20, 4? Well, let's see, negative 92 plus uh, 112, that to me definitely looks like it gives us 20. Uh, negative uh, 276, did I do my math wrong here? Um, I sure hope not. No, okay, everything's perfect. i um, losing my mind. So negative 276 plus 280 is definitely positive 4. So hey, in fact, we have found our correct constants, C1, C2. So we've now shown, we've now shown that this vector uh, with components 20 and 4 belongs in the span of those original two vectors. Okay, So, you know, uh, uh, kind of a more general question, and this is a lot of times, you know, where you're headed. Can we take any vector in R2 and write that as a linear combination of these vectors with components 1, 3, and 2, 5? So, uh, the short answer, which I'm going to show right now, uh, and we can, we'll generalize this later on down the road, but it says uh, any two vectors in R2 that are not scalar multiples of each other will span all of R2. So not quite proving that, but uh, that's something that in fact is true. So 
based on that, it says we should be able to write any single vector in R2 using these two vectors. Notice they're not a multiple of each other. You know, if I multiply the first vector by, say, positive 2, I would get 2, 6. Well, that doesn't produce this vector, okay? So these are certainly not multiples of each other. So based on that result, we should be able to write any vector in R2 as a linear combination of these two vectors. So, okay, so to, to justify this, there's definitely different ways to do that. Okay, so there's, way, there's a way to use uh, inverses and square matrices, uh, but I'm going to show a slightly different way, just a slightly different way. So, you know, so I, I, w what I want to do is I'm going to take C1 times 1 and 3, and C2 times our vector 2 comma 5. And again, what we want to do is we want to be able to produce any vector. Let's suppose it has components x and y. So if I can somehow figure out, you know, my, my scalars, C1 and C2, that will produce this generic vector, well, then it says that any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination. Okay, so again, different ways to do this. I'm going to write a little system of equations. So we would have C1 times 1 plus 2C2 equals x. And then we would have, I guess, 3C1 plus 5C2 equals y. So what I want to do is I'm just going to find some condition, you know, uh, for our, our scalars that at the end of the day will produce these components x and y. All I'm going to do in this case, again, you could use row reduction. I'm just going to use a little bit of substitution here is all I'm going to do. So notice if we take the first equation and solve for c1, it says that c1 will equal, well, x minus 2 times c2. And I'm going to substitute that into my next equation. So it says 3 times c1, which is x minus 2c2, plus 5c2. That's going to equal y. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to find uh, conditions for my constants, my scalars. So I'm going to solve for c2. So it says we have 3x minus 6c sub 2 plus 5 c sub 2, that equals y. Well, let's see. Um, I'm going to subtract the y over, so we'll have 3x minus y. Notice if we combine negative 6c2 plus 5c2, that would give us a negative c2. And I'm going to add that to the right side. So there's my constant c2. And now I'm just going to plug that back in to uh, find the restriction for my constant c1. So it says C1 is going to be x minus 2 times C2, which is 3x minus y. Well, this is going to be x minus, it looks like, uh, 6x plus 2y. And I guess that gives us, what, uh, negative 5x plus 2y. So what it says is, um, it says if you want to produce, you know, any vector with components, uh, a vector with component x and y, it says you now have a little formula to determine what your, your scalars need to be. Uh, it says plug them in here, that'll tell you C1, plug them into the other, that'll give you C2. So maybe, for example, we want to produce, I don't know, let's produce the vector, um, I don't know, how about... 4, 7. Again, just something at random. Well, again, so it says C1 would have to equal, okay, so we said that's negative 5x plus 2y, which in this case we'll get negative 5 times 4, so again I'm just multiplying, plus 2 times y, which is the value 7. So let's see, that's negative 20 plus 14, that's going to give us negative 6. To get our value for C2, we said, where did our C2 go? That's 3x minus y. So we've got 3 times x, which again is positive 4, minus y, which in this case is 7. Okay, so that's 12 minus 7, which is going to give us positive 5. So let's in fact see if this works. Okay, so C sub 1, we said that should be negative 6. And then I'm going to multiply that by the vector 1, comma 3, plus C2. Okay, so 
our scalar there we've decided should be 5. And we'll multiply that by uh, the vector with components 2 and 5. And again, the vector that we were trying to produce was the vector with components 4 and 7. And let's see if it works. It looks like we get, well, negative 6 plus 10. Negative 6 plus 10 is definitely going to give us 4. And then we get negative 18 uh, plus 25. Well, negative 18 plus 25 does give us positive 7. So lo and behold, we have figured out um, you know, what our real number scalars would need to be so that when we, when we multiply by our original two vectors, we do produce that new vector. So um, you know, we've kind of gone through a generic argument here to basically show if you give me any vector x and y, again, we've now got nice little formulas that will produce those, uh, those scalars so that when we perform our linear combination, we do in fact get that desired vector. Okay? So other ways to, to address this question for sure, um, and we'll talk about that in some other examples. But this is the basic idea with a span of vectors. Um, obviously, I'm using vectors in R2 just to kind of keep the arithmetic a little bit manageable. Um, you know, you can do... You can uh, obviously extend this to, to any vector space, R sub n, and go through the same argument, albeit a bit more tedious. So, um, you know, another uh, thing that we'll want to generalize, so, you know, I said any two vectors in R2 that are not scalar multiples of each other will span all of R2. We have to be a little bit more careful about this as we go into higher dimensions, and we'll, we'll talk about this in some other examples. So, again, this is the notion of a span of vectors. Just, you're kind of starting with some number of vectors. Again, I started with two vectors um, originally. You could certainly start with more than just two vectors. Um, but the idea is if you start with a certain number of vectors, by going through these linear combinations, um, you know, what new vectors can you produce from those? That's, that's the basic idea.